Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be discussing our programming language. Uh, it is going to be on Linux uh, Rocky platform. Uh, so um, the video is going to be discussing about our language on Rocky Linux platform. So uh, in this video is going to be brought to you at my web university, my YouTube channel. Uh, this is Wahid Lutfi. I'm uh, going to uh, cover the software installation. Basically, in order to install uh, our programming language, you have to visit the URL HTTPS, which is a secure page, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, HTTPS, r-project.org is the URL name, and then that's a secure page, as you can see, SSL certificate is installed. So everything is going through encryption. And then also uh, the mirror image of that one is uh, the same um, r-project.org is a uh, mirror as uh, C-R-A-N, that's a uh, CRAN. And uh, CRAN stands for um, Comprehensive R Archive Network. R is the R, um, R programming language. Uh, so um, I will um, show you that you can download uh, for Windows platform, for uh, Linux platform, for Mac OS X from R projects. And that's the URL that you could uh, download all the packages. But let's uh, discuss why we need to learn R programming language. R programming is a statistical uh, programming language. It is for data visualization, data science, data modeling, data analysis, big data. All of that uh, could be uh, as a data set or data frames, and then you could just manipulate the data and uh, create metadata, which is basically by uh, looking at data set as raw data, then you just generate some knowledge about that one, and then you produce the output as a data scientist or as a informat uh, bioinformatics um, engineer or somebody else, data modeling or data scientist, any one of you, you could just uh, manipulate the data and then get uh, the data frame uh, into a meaningful output, which could be data visualization for, by printing the graphic images and so on. So R is an open source, uh, which was uh, GNU. Uh, GNU is kind of, um, stand for uh, GNU is not Unix, so it's like recursive calling itself. And then also it is, um, GNU is open source, and then the open source is called general public license. So it is open for free to the general public. That's why it's called uh, uh, GPL. And then uh, it's free uh, or open source. And as long as you uh, maintain the GP, uh, GPL, uh, general public license for the GNU, uh, that is uh, going to be available for you as well as uh, to the public and then um, you can uh, get the source and then uh, spread it out. And then also um, R was inspired by S a programming language. S was originally in 1972, was um, uh, developed at the Bell Laboratory of um, at and and it was called the Statistical Software, that's what, what S stands for. That was the predecessor of R language, R is the successor of, uh, successor of statistical uh, programming language, and then R was also um, inspired by uh, by S. But R is uh, stand for R programming language because of the two pioneer or the developers were uh, Ross um, and then um, Robert. The two of them that they start their first name as with R, so they named it R, and then the, also the successor of S. And then uh, it's also statistical as well as um, uh, statistical computing. And then um, you could do data science with it. And then um, you could do data mining, data visualization, and um, data analysis. And also it is uh, very extensively used uh, for data scientists as well as uh, bioinformatics and, uh, engineers, as well as uh, data mining and data analysis. And so and that is all good for it. And then for data visualization, you could plot the graph of a uh, data set very easily using um, these uh, queries 
that is much, much more easier than SQL statement or a standard query language statements and uh, like a select statement on and the um, prior um, um, kind of like um, filter and other functions are much, much more intuitive. Uh, we will discuss some of them and then uh, you could also learn from it by reading the documentation online or in the website. R is an interpreted language, and so it is um, a not compiled language, but R is very efficient and very uh, much uh, into um, easy programming, similar to Python programming. R is very, very extensively used by data scientists. And then R has a console as well as um, R Studio. So I'm gonna install uh, the console for our programming uh, language, which is the interpreter, and the console is the command line interface, and that you could just uh, run the commands on the console and then get the output uh, as you do. But you also have IDE integrated development environment, then you can install the R Studio, which is a graphical user interface. There's a lot of other IDEs like Jupyter Notebook and then um, a Visual Studio that you could uh, get. Uh, or extension installing it and then code it. So you could do that when it's not a problem uh, with the IDs, but R provide their own ID also called R Studio, which I'm going to install uh, with Linux. We already showed you on Windows how to do it. And then I'm going to do it on Linux uh, Re uh, Rocky uh, Fedora distribution. So R is supported uh, six type of data structures. The six type, uh, the main one is vector, Vectorization, it makes it much, much easier for our language. And then uh, with vectors, uh, you can do um, a very good data structure, whether it's a, a character data structure or um, a numbers or integer or a Boolean on their different type of data types. So vector is one of the data structures that R supports. List is another one. Uh, with, uh, all of these ones are basically uh, one dimensional uh, homogeneous a data type, meaning that um, once you declare the data type, you're set to uh, use that one. And then less this um, um, homogeneous as well as heterogeneous. So you could have a, a different data types within a list, uh, a list inside a list. And there's a lot of, um, R fun is a functional programming, but all, all R also support object uh, in classes. So you could do uh, objects and classes and manipulation of objects within the um, R language. Uh, R also support met matrix uh, data structure, arrays data structure, factor data structure, and data frame. The main building block of R language for data scientists is the data frames. There's a lot of uh, data sets available for in every packages. Packages are basically libraries, and libraries that you could uh, get uh, functions and documentation inside these libraries. When you load a package, you get a list of um, uh, features with that package, which are uh, come in terms of uh, functions. And then the documentation with it, it also comes in. So you will be learning a lot of that one also this. Uh, in one video, nobody could cover everything about our programming language or Python or C or C++, but as time allowed, I'll cover more. So I'm going to cover on the R language programming for um, Linux uh, Red, uh, Rocky. Uh, Fedora distribution is uh, Rocky. Uh, Fedora distribution and Linux is the main one that is called Fedora. And then uh, Red Hat, Rocky, CentOS, all of those ones are Fedora distribution. There's also uh, Linux, um, Debian distribution, which is like Linux Mint and other ones. There's a lot of Linux Mint and Linux uh, uh, Sasami, and there's a lot of them. Uh, and then uh, also there's uh, Linux Ubuntu, for example, um, it's a, a Debian distribution. And then you have OpenSUSE and other ones that there are different uh, flavor of uh, Linux. So object-oriented programming is uh, supported within R because of the class and um, uh, objects. However, R is mainly functional programming. So the meaning that you can uh, have a programming language similar to like a Lisp programming. If you're uh, familiar with Lisp, um, object-oriented kind of concept of Lisp, 
that you can make uh, uh, function programming uh, as nested functions to just uh, do some stuff. That, so uh, LESP is also functional programming. So you could do recursive uh, or nested uh, functions. And uh, I could show you some of those ones as well. And then R is also um, has a support for object. And object, everything in life can be objects. And then classes are basically a blueprint of the objects. For example, human is a class. And then uh, a person is uh, an instance of that class which means an, an object of that class. Uh, a person has certain attributes or properties, and then um, those are uh, properties and attributes are associated, uh, for example, for the person name, person ID, person social security number, person job, the title, uh, last name, first name, uh, where he lives and the address, all that information or property or attributes of that person. But what a person can do is basically as uh, the function or uh, methods that is uh, defined on the uh, object. And then um, a person, for example, inherit something from the super class of human. So a person could be um, a teacher and then a teacher inherit certain characteristics what a teacher does, whether, uh, for example, the property of a teacher, whether he or she uh, is a full-time or part-time instructor, and then what classes they teach, they all have certain uh, similar similarity on terms of attributes. There's a lot of concept that comes with object-oriented program. There's four paradigms of object-oriented programming that some of them in uh, our language also use, but my, uh, Python is mainly object-oriented programming as well as functional programming. So the four paradigms in Python, you can see that it's um, used extensively on it. Or also use the ESA or HAZA or N, all of those methods that are part of the um, comparison operators that you can do with, um, or um, uh, methods that uh, could inherit certain characteristics uh, that's also object-oriented. But the four paradigms of object-oriented programming is um, abstraction, which is and you define a class name as dogs or animal. As soon as you say the animal, uh, you're uh, kind of uh, uh, abstracting the definition of what an animal is. You don't have to define what type of animal it is. Once you say cat or dog, now you're classifying it into subclass. So the subclass and they all inherit from the parent class and those kind of definitions. So abstraction is one uh, data hiding. Data hiding is um, a feature of uh, object-oriented programming that you define the class and you just say, for example, um, uh, you gave it an interface. For example, the furniture or cars or um, motorcycle or whatever you type in uh, as the class name, then, and then it is, the rest of the, def uh, the definition is coming after. So you could uh, hide some of the uh, details, which means like, for example, if you look at the remote controller, the remote controller has some buttons to push, but the details are all uh, uh, in the remote controller itself. So that is all the interface itself is um, kind of, uh, uh, whether it's a remote controller, whether it's a calculator, whether it's a, any uh, other device like cell phone, you look at the interface and the rest of the details or data hiding, we call it. But once you push a button, a two plus two, then obviously the operator class in this case is um, used to um, uh, put two uh, and two together as two operand and then do the summation. So um, there's a data hiding and then there's inheritance which a uh, super class um, always uh, have uh, all the information and details. And then the subclass that are part of the child uh, classes, they inherit from the parent class. For example, the pets class, uh, each pet, whether it's cat uh, has a name, they all have certain like cats, certain uh, methods that they uh, speak uh, with meow when uh, the dogs who could bark. So those, those the different, um, uh, kind of um, different uh, formation that uh, a, a pet could take at one point. One of them could be polymorphism, uh, another object-oriented concept, meaning it could take multiple forms. 
So a dog could bark and then a cat could speak, uh, a meow and then a fish does not speak. Those methods are different for different animals or different objects or a different instance. When you instantiate an object, you define uh, that object to be an instance of that class. So there's a lot of uh, concept like that. And then um, we will discuss uh, some of it on uh, later videos. At this time, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So um, I want to just thank you for watching this uh, channel. We're not done yet. I'm going to just basically move uh, to uh, uh, just the lab activity and show you how to install our console and our studio uh, uh, next. And then once we install the R console, you could just actually practice using our language. So um, in the past, I already installed uh, some of the, um, uh, like the R uh, studio. And here I was just uh, playing around with um, one of the data set uh, with um, uh, Iris uh, data set. So as you can see here, the functions that I just uh, did here, uh, I uh, generated a plot function with head of iris and tail of iris uh, dollar sign uh, species. And then the color is um, a darkish uh, kind of um, green. So this pound 009T00, the pound is the hash code for the uh, hash um, hexadecimal value. And then you could say 00 is for red and then 90 is for uh, uh, green. And this is the dark greenish color uh, there. And then the blue is zero, zero, meaning they don't give it any blue. PCH is 19 is the thickness of this um, line. And then the line width also is five. In this case, we could see it. You can see Virginica is showing on this information. And you could uh, just do whatever, uh, like if I do line width color is uh, this, or uh, let's say uh, just um, on this one, let me move this one out of the way. I cannot see the uh, zoom is blocking me. So let's say I wanted the darkish red. I could say 55000. 55 is for the uh, red. So now the data is showing darkish red. And then all obviously some of the information here. I'll uh, show you later on the other ones. And then um, the IDE has like four uh, different aspects of um, uh, and four different panes. You can just look at each of those panes. One is the source and that you can just uh, get to uh, write source code and then save it and run it as a script, uh, which is called live script. Then also there's a, right, let me clear the screen. So control L will uh, clear the screen and this is my console on this one. In addition to the console, for every system, you have also a terminal. On the terminal, basically based on the system that you're on, uh, if I do clear command here now, clear screen, for example, will clear this screen, but notice that clear screen did not work. So that is going to work on this one. If I say host name, now I'm on algorithm. If I say system uh, info, because I'm on a Windows machine, I'm getting, um, the more is not recognized, not this. So I could say here, system information, and it will tell me the system information details. Um, there's a lot of um, PowerShell command here. You could also uh, say uname minus A, and then you can see that this main uh, GW64 and T version of this operating system. So it's a light main uh, GW64 is the minimal uh, GNU uh, for Windows 64 bit. That's what main GW stands for. And then this is um, a minimal version is like similar to Segwin or Windows subshell or uh, like a small uh, container Docker kind of things. Main GW uh, allow you to run uh, uh, ls command, uh, run directory command, run pwd. So a lot of the things that you could do, like my uname minus a, give you information, and then let's say cat uh, slash etc or slash release. Some of the information, if it is there, you it will give you the detail. But if it is not there, obviously. I'm on a Windows machine, notice that I'm on one drive here, right? So some of the information you can get from here, or you could just say, let me just go on the console and say, 
Git um, working directory. So you could get those ones as well, similar commands like ls will give you the list, but and the storage information. Some of the things that are here on the console, you can run anything you want. So like, for example, let's say I want to say, um, just um, run a for statement. So you could say uh, sequence of, uh, without the for statement, I could say sequence of uh, zero, uh, 360 and then um, 45 degree. So if I just want to get uh, between zero to 45 degree difference, say zero, 45, 90, 135, all the way to 360, then I could do this one. And then if I could say, for example, um, give me a plot, uh, give me a pie chart of that one, right? Uh, of um, sequence of that one. Or I could assign that one to a variable, say uh, x is equal, and then this is the assignment statement. So I could say sequence of um, 0, 360, 45 degree difference. So now x is there, and then I could say plot um, x, and then uh, this is just, let's see, the plot of x is the figure of a margin too large. So now I'm going to say, uh, let's say, um, get a, a pie chart of it. <clears throat> and then that's a still a figure too large. So I'm going to say 10 comma X of this. And let's say um, that information is, um, let me just uh, do something different there. I'm going to plot, uh, uh, let's say one to 10. Let me just uh, make this plot a little bit bigger and uh, clear my screen. And so I'm going to say first, uh, let's just uh, generate an X is equal uh, 1 to 10. Or 1 to 10, yeah. X is there. So if I just say plot X here, you can see that it is uh, plotted here, the number. So the margin and other ones are not there. So I could say uh, get the exponential of 10. Um, on this one. It is not going to do that one, but the uh, exponential of x may do it, yes. You can see exponential is there. So now if you just say, um, I want to see that plot with uh, some um, PCH is equal 19. So I can see some thickness there, right? You can see that it's there. And then if I want to see some um, uh, color, color is equal and then I say uh, color is equal, let's say, I could use the word like dark, dark green, and it will just do that dark green color or just uh, assign it red. I could do that one. And then at, at the same time, I could just do this one uh, with different uh, functions. So if I say, give me a, uh, and instead of exponential of it, it could say, give me a log, uh, natural log of it then you could see the output, it uh, just changes, right? And so a lot of these definition that you're doing, it is um, depending on the data set. But um, some of the things that you could do with our language, whether it's a Windows or Linux, it's all about what data set uh, frame that are available, data frame are available, what variable you declared, what method you are calling it, and what functions uh, are being passed to it. So. Uh, for example, let's say we say iris data, and you can see that iris data set is already available. So if I look at a head of iris, you can see that iris is uh, that Satosa and all of those ones, right? So if I say, uh, let's just uh, see the iris in terms of, um, I'm going to say plot uh, iris, uh, dollar sign and when you do the dollar sign notice the variable that are uh, available for you, you it, it comes in so one of them is a species right so if i do this and then it's uh, going to um let's just get the dollar sign first uh, we get the output here and then um, iris dot uh, dollar sign species is uh, empty why is that empty let me just see Okay, so I'm going to say, um, 
iris um, and then you say blood iris um, dollar sign species and you can see here the iris uh, species uh, uh, setosa uh, um, vers uh, versicolor and uh, virginica or the three different types. And you have control over the colors and everything. So you could just say, um, do a color of um, red, for example. You could do that one and then uh, it will just change the color and um, you could do much more differences on it. So if I just say X of this one, let's see what the X the value that we created, X is not um, matching the number of, the length has to be the same for and the three type so um if i change this lot inaccurately so uh, you have to give the sine or cosine and then zero is starting and two times pi so if i do want to just change it to uh, like eight pi obviously it's going to just give me the uh, sign of uh, between zero to eight uh, times pi and if i want to just get the cosine function obviously it give me the cosine function uh, same thing so now um that cosine, you cannot put it as a cosine function. You have to put a COS, and then once you do that one, and then if you want a, a line wave uh, to just uh, be a little bit thicker, you could do that one so it will show the better um, kind of color. And then this one, let me just clear my screen here. Um, so you could do something like that, and then um, if you say, well, uh, let's uh, draw the tangent of it. You could just do tangent of uh, this between zero to eight pi. You could see the formula there. Obviously, um, this information that you're passing in for sine, uh, it is uh, just uh, standard there. And you could also say, for example, let's say do a plot of um, uh, exponential uh, of pi, for example. You could do that. And then um, you could do like 10 or whatever exponential and then say the line width um, so you can see it better as like five, five the thickness is there and then you could say um, do a plot of um, the norm of that one normalization the normalization of that one and then this one I'm going to do um, uh, for five and then just uh, delete this one, and then this one is comma, and then like, so you could do that one, plot the norm, uh, the norm, and then um, let me just do that. Yeah, so there was an extra uh, uh, parenthesis uh, after five. Once you remove that one, it uh, draws that one. And then you could do a lot of uh, things with it. Uh, doesn't matter which uh, line you draw or something, you could do uh, a plot in, in there. And then um, the plotting is not the only thing that you should be learning uh, here. So you could do like four statement and other ones, but let's you know, just save some of it for the um, work that we do with um, with. Um, our language on the Red Hat machine. So here I have a, a not Red Hat, Fedora Rocky version. So I'm going to just log in here. That's the screen saver it's running. And let me just make sure that I type in the password correctly. Okay, I just uh, forgot what was the password for it, but I remember now. So, okay, now I have um, this environment. Let me just say that if you see OS dash release, you can see I'm on a, a Red Hat Enterprise Linux Fedora distribution, but it is a Rocky distribution, right? Rocky 9.2, uh, you can see 9.2 Linux version. You can also say cut EDC um, Rocky uh, dash release file, and it will just give you one line 9.2 uh, version. Uh, the 
code name is Blue Onyx. So you could uh, see that one. At this time, I'm going to uh, show you where I am. Uh, so I'm on this host, uh, which is localhost, a local domain, and then uname dash a will tell me I'm on a Linux uh, uh, Rocky version. So uh, at um, some point, if you type in pwd, it shows you that uh, I'm on the temp DNF that packages. In order for you to uh, get it faster, I already downloaded the packages for R. I'm going to show you what I am going to install. And this is the package, but um, you have to go to uh, Debian distribution here on the activity when you click on, and then you just go to R projects, for example. And there's um, Linux uh, distribution available for you that I already went there. Let me just uh, close some of these other win windows. So here is um, uh, the R Studio uh, desktop version that I could have a choice of downloading it. And it is on uh, this URL that is uh, download slash studio dash desktop. You could just download R um, uh, Studio. And then basically the name of the packages is um, for each operating system, whether it's Windows, Mac OS X, or Ubuntu, or Red Hat, Debian, or Suzy, Fedora, they have a distribution for it. And you just have to download that uh, RPM, which is stand for uh, Red Hat Package Manager. And then that's a uh, um, Fedora distribution for uh, RPM Package Manager. And then uh, with, with um, Su uh, Suzy, uh, not Suzy, sorry, uh, Red Hat Rocky and then um, uh, CentOS and um, Fedora and Red Hat. Uh, all of them, uh, including Rocky, use YAM or DNF uh, to install these packages or RPM, just a Red Hat Package Manager. For uh, Linux Ubuntu, you can use DPKG, which is Debian Packages and or, or uh, apt, Application Package Toolkit to install them. So um, I have already downloaded uh, the right version for R Studio. At the same time, there's also, if you go to HTTPS on the first slide that I showed you, r-projects, r-project.org. If you go to that site, which is a secure page, and then click on download R, at this time the download on the cloud it shows up, this is the closest to your system is already detected and that um, the uh, um, closest uh, mirror distribution that you can get the repository or archive of these packages. You can just click on whichever one uh, on the OS version, whether you need it for Linux, uh, Debian, Fedora, Red Hat, Ubuntu, or Mac OS X or uh, Windows. You can get it uh, there usually for R you uh, install the base, uh, and then for R Studio, you install the R Studio either on desktop or server side. If you are supporting it on the server side, then you need to support for uh, other people connecting to your server to just uh, be uh, using the R Studio, then you need to install the server. But if you are just doing the IDE for yourself or a desktop or a workstation, then you need to install the R for uh, desktop. In this case, I'm going to install the R console as well as R desktop. And then if uh, later on the video uh, is needed, I will just create one for you for um, the server side as well. And then the server side, the only difference is that you have to enable the firewall and then listen to uh, some ports like 87, 87 and 60,000 60, and 60,000 dash uh, 61,000, all of those ones, whether TCP port or UDP port, you have to enable them. And then once you do it through the firewall, then you can just do system D start uh, uh, R studio uh, dash server, and then you can go through the browser through the port 8787 and, and just uh, use it. But at this time, I'm going to uh, just uh, show you from the command line how you do it. And so let me just get back to uh, Linux. Uh, and then uh, the Linux uh, Red Hat here, I had a prompt here already available. So I'm gonna do a clear screen here and notice that I'm on that directory on the temp DNF PKG. So if I say uh, here 
DNF repo list, you can see that the list of uh, repos uh, that I have, have um, I had to enable the uh, repo, uh, epal dash release. So the, the way you uh, do that one, if it is not enabled already, you can say DNF um, install epal dash release. And then uh, that's basically um, is going to make that one uh, available for you. It is already for mine is uh, installed. So it is already resolved and the EPAL is available with the extra packages. So I'm going to uh, say if your system allows it for whether you're on Red Hat or Rocky or CentOS or um, any or even Ubuntu, if you do an apt on it or DPKG and install it, um, then you should be able to uh, get uh, the archive or the package installed. And for example, I'm on the Rocky Linux, uh, uh, Rocky version 9.2, I could do a DNF um, search and then R. It will just search for all the, but notice that <laughs> there's so much about just the letter R. So that's not gonna help. So if I say, in the state, I, in the state I say DNF info, give me information on the R package, then you could see that R uh, is a uh, available package and then it says that RPM sources, and this is 4.4.1 and all of that detail. And it is uh, on the repository as uh, EPA. Uh, you could also say DNF provides, provides R. You could do that also and then you can see that it is basically available. But notice that even though these are the package name, if you say DNF install, and then you give this package name, say, go ahead, install R4.4 something. Notice that this does not say anything with R-core or anything. So even if you just cut and paste this one, it will uh, say something that you cannot install it this way. And notice that it says conflicting possibly, and it says that you need to do R dash core dash development or core dash develop and then Java and all of that, right? So, and one command that I would help you with that you should do this one you say DNF um, repo query. A repo query, if you just uh, do it and then R dash, you know that it is uh, start with R and then it has a dash and then a start, meaning the wildcard, anything that match after that one. Notice that when I did our uh, repo query, it is going to say that, well, I have these packages. If I do a word count on this one, word count minus L, you can see there's 20 of them. But which one is the one that I need is that our Java and our development, all of that one and our core. So the best thing to do is that, uh, revise your search and say, let's get the R core first. So the R core is uh, in those packages. And then I'm not gonna do a word count. And uh, there's two packages that I need. So you can see R core uh, base and R core uh, development. So I could install R core base, uh, development and I could say DNF info R dash core. And then uh, let's see uh, that information is good enough for me to just say the name is R core and then it's uh, the minimal R co component is served for the functional runtime. So you, if you install this one, you have a functional uh, runtime, uh, functionable uh, runtime environment with GNU general public license 2.0 or later. So that is one thing. And if I say uh, core dash devel, that is also information on that one. You could also see that it is core files for development of R packages. No Java is needed. But if I say uh, R and dash Java, uh, and then you could see that R Java is, this one is also a language and environment for statistical. This is also like an uh, interpreter that for it and that supports it. With the Java, you could also get the Luna. And then uh, if you do man uh, uh, Lua, uh, Lua is the interpreter that you could do batch scripting and then um, a lot of the scripting that is going to allow you uh, running this batch with Lua uh, here. And then we do, uh, do use this one for um, HPC uh, environment and um, 
high performance computing on the Gattaca, which is um, Gattaca and naturally um, TAC. TAC is stand for uh, Texas Automation Supercomputing Environment, which is University of Texas uh, there. Uh, it, and they provide um, Lone Star 6 and we do use uh, Lua for it, uh, for a scripting. So I'm going to just install the uh, R uh, core first and then say a DNF install that would install and the R uh, core. So it's already installed. So I'm going to say which R, you can see R is already there. Let's remove it first to see what packages are going to come. So DNF remove R core, I'm going to say, yes, uh, remove it. Notice with R core, all these dependencies are there. Open blues and, and toolkit and, and, and so on. I mean, there's so many of, uh, other ones. So I'm going to just uh, remove it first. Uh, because I uh, earlier installed it, now I'm going to reinstall it, okay? So uh, if I say um, install, it's going to just show that uh, all these packages that are going to come, and I'm going to say, yes, go ahead, install. At this time, I have the R console, um, which means notice all these other packages are uh, core. This is the Enterprise uh, Linux 9, the one that is actually the main uh, core that is going to do it. And then the toolkit and other packages that are there, open blast and uh, toolkit flex and other stuff, right? So if I just uh, do this one and then uh, say uh, RPM minus QA or direct minus I um, R dash core. So let's see uh, what is the name of the package. You can see here, I have R core dash package there. So if I just say, um, RPM minus QL, a query uh, gave me a long listing, dollar sign, and then gave this one as input to my other command, RPM dash QL, then you can see it's giving you a query listing of all that one. So then I say grip minus I bin, you can see that our, all the binaries that are having the path bin, all of them are showing here as a list. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more than the, that, but the one that I'm interested in all these ones, right? That are actually R uh, Ben, or like this one is the main one, R script and R Ben, right? So um, I, if I say clear screen, which R, you can see as uh, R is there. File user Ben uh, slash R, you can see that is a, a script uh, ASCII text file. And most likely that's either in bash or a born shell or something. So if I say more on user ben r, you can see that's a uh, born shell sh and there the head of it is there. So you can see all the script is uh, those, and then it gives you all those options to uh, run r and then all the arguments. At this time, I'm going to just simply type r and then get into r console. And then notice that all the information here that is available, whether I say license, um, you could read the license or demo uh, or start demo or something, you can see all of this information here. So if I just say uh, print one to 100, and then it will just do that one. Uh, that's like a fast way to do a for statement. If you just say sequence of um, 10 to 100, and then uh, with uh, show me and, uh, 10 and then 12 and then so on uh, by increment of two, you could see that that is going to do that. Similarly, if you say 100 to um, uh, 10 and then and decrement by 20, that is uh, minus 20, then you can see from 100, it's going to go down to 20 very fast because you're subtracting by 20. And then if you just say, uh, let me do a for statement, you can say for X and um, sequence of, um, let's say 100 uh, comma 1000 and then increment by um, 100 also, then you could say uh, do that one and then that uh, is your um, sequence and this is the closing condition of X for X and then you say brace, print uh, dollar sign, not dollar sign in this case, but print X, 
And in this one, you don't need to do that. And look at how fast that is there. And uh, I could have just uh, simply do uh, avoid the for statement by doing a sequence of 100 to 1000 and then 100. That would just print the same thing uh, there. I didn't need to do a print statement. I didn't do anything. Uh, so a sequence is also um, really uh, good. On, uh, um, uh, let's say uh, you want to write a function to generate your own. So there's a lot of built-in function. For example, you could say absolute value of 10. You could get the absolute value of 10. And absolute value of minus 10 is going to do that one. Uh, let's say standard deviation of that one is not applicable because it's negative. And, but it's, if you say uh, standard deviation of one to 10, you could get that number and that, that range because it's a uh, vector. And if you say a one colon 10, it just gave you that vector. And if you say um, five of uh, one to 10, you can see that it is uh, numbers, right? Type of, uh, type uh, of, uh, P was missing there. So it's integer. And then you could say what type of uh, uh, data it is, you know, data structure, you could say class, and it tells you it's integer. So if I just do um, that uh, one to 10, and then I wanna say, let's say um, go from um, 10,000, uh, all 10,000 to 10 with a uh, decrement of 1,000. So that would just uh, do that, um, not class actually. You want to just uh, do a sequence of that one. And so uh, this will, let me just make sure, oh, this is uh, uh, not colon, it is comma. A sequence is a function that takes three arguments, a start, um, end, and then decrement or increment by. So you could say decrement by 1,000, you could do this one. If you want a larger number, then you just uh, get this one. And then imagine if you didn't not specify this one, by default is um, one. So 1,000 to a decrement by one. And if you just uh, do um, uh, the other way around, like here, 100 to um, 1,000, 1,000, obviously it's gonna just uh, increment by that, uh, by one number. But if you say increment by 500, then it's gonna end faster than uh, it's going to say 10, 600, and then 10,000 already uh, moved up. So um, with the um, variable declaration that you uh, wrote it, for example, let's say you um, did a um, factor, let's just uh, create a vector one, is equal uh, is equal um, one to ten. So uh, clearing my screen here, you can uh, assign v one uh, is this uh, one colon ten like that is going to just give you one uh, through ten, or you could just do the normal method of uh, assigning uh, equality uh, for assignment statement that also do does the same thing. Or you could even uh, do this, uh, v um, one column 10, uh, send the output to v one, uh, well, meaning that they're redirected to that one. But uh, the latter is not encouraged to do it. The first one, the choice that is uh, right here, this is the one that you wanna do assignment statement. That's kind of like when you have, say, I'm doing a Pythonic way, this is a Artonic way, whatever you could call it, uh, and the R method. Um, so, um, and then um, let's, let's do um, uh, some declaration. So we did the V1 here, and then I'm going to do a um, matrix multiplication here. So V, uh, if I say class of V1 is a, a vector, and then if I say V1 times uh, two, Notice every number is multiplied by two. The V1, uh, one times two is two, two times two is four, and 10 times two is 20. Similarly, if I do um, to the power of, to the power of, this is the power of symbol. So then you can see that uh, every number is uh, to the power of that number. I mean, that number to the power of uh, two. So the 20 is, um, the 10 is um, 100, and then uh, the nine is 81. 
and then one is uh, to the power of two is um, obviously right there. Uh, to the power of one is two. And uh, to the power of two is uh, four, and to the power of one is uh, one. So um, let's uh, do another one. Um, we're going to uh, do um, module. Uh, Module uh, uh, remainder. A remainder is like 10. Um, this is the symbol for module. Uh, module three should be one. And module two should be zero. Module five should be zero. Module four should be two. So whatever remainder that comes in, that's the module uh, remainder. And then uh, you could say, uh, give me floor of um, 10.5. And that would give you a floor of uh, 10.5. Uh, oh, uh, I put a comma. I meant a 10.5. So the, the, it's harder to type, I mean, to see it. So in order to see it better, I have to do control plus, control shift plus. And then now it is bigger. I could just uh, see it better. Now I could say 10.1. Uh, the floor is still going to do it. But if I wanted the ceiling of it, and the function is ceiling. So that would return 11 and 10.9 also return 11, 10 point anything, but it's going to return 11 ceiling. So you could also, uh, if you forgot that uh, function, what is uh, the data, you could say question mark and then type in the uh, function that you need. You type in, like for example, let's say, you want to see uh, the head function, what it does uh, there. You could get it. So control shift minus, and then a little bit too big uh, there. So I'm going to resize it here. And you can see that all the function with the argument and everything syntax is provided to you. At this time, I'm going to just say, let's uh, work on a data set, okay? So uh, here by default, if I say data, the base uh, data set uh, is already loaded. Uh, I mean, it's already available. It's not loaded yet. You could do a library in base and then it will uh, available for you. But there are some of these um, packages that are available by default that you can uh, start using it, uh, as you can see here. And there are some other packages uh, that you have to load it. So if I just say uh, control L and I say, uh, library, and then I say base. So let's say the base is now loaded here. How do you know whether it is uh, loaded or not loaded? Uh, because of this data or data set, and then you can see that the name of the packages that are available at this time for me, carbon dioxide and women and um, all these other ones that are there. Uh, it is uh, IRS and so on. So uh, let's look at a couple of them, like you can see all of these ones. So if I say women, what is that one? And let's see. And you can see that height, width. And so this is like if I say you know, women, uh, what is showing, it says the height and width for American women. That is a data structure that is uh, basically um, the whole data set is available for you that you can get the uh, data sets uh, for um, different um, size of uh, width and height, and then uh, year that they are uh, doing it. Women, uh, you can see a summary on the women, the function uh, that would give you a summary of that um, there. You can also say glimpse on uh, women to see if uh, that uh, function does have anything or not. So sometimes the function is not available for that um, data set. Like for example, if I say iris, what is there? And then I say summary of iris and the flowers and, and that we looked at it earlier. You can see that it is there and then say a glimpse of iris. This is like uh, giving you a could not of a, um, oh, glimpse. I thought it was blim no, bl yeah, glimpse or <laughs> whatever that name was, I forgot, glimpse. Let me just uh, say, so you forgot the function, whether it was called glimpse or uh, blimps. You could just do a, 
a question mark on it. And that double question mark it gives you a fuzzy matching, but uh, it looks like the limp is not there yet. Let me see if that one comes with a different data set. Uh, so I think it comes with a different data set. I'm going to load a different data set. So I'm going to do control L and then I say, in order to load the library, in this case, I'm going to do a library tidy verse. Tidyverse is a, a great um, list of collection of packages that uh, contains a lot of other packages. As you can see, it says that it's not installed. So in order to install it, I have to do uh, something like this and say install.packages and then uh, tidyverse. And, and tidyverse has to be um, within the double code here, tidyverse, uh, to uh, make sure they recognize it. Then it's going to go to the um, mirrors and say which uh, mirror you want to do it. I'm going to do it from zero cloud HTTPS. That is the uh, closest one. So it's going to try to uh, download all the packages that are tied to a uh, tidy uh, uh, verse. And then uh, some of them are a D wire and uh, stringer and then iris and other ones. So we will just look at those packages. Uh, once it is installed here. And then we can see um, what is that uh, data set or data frames and that contain it. In this case, it's a data set. Um, it is going to take a little bit time. And uh, as this one is uh, going to do the installation, if there's no um, issue with the packages, you will get all of them installed. But if there is any uh, issue with the packages that are not available, at the time that you're doing it, some sites are down or something, you just have to download it with uh, uh, different methods. Uh, with DNF, you can use that um, dash um, dash download only, and then dash dash download and dir is equal, and then all the R packages, whatever you want, you can download it and then and just install it with local install option of DNF. And that way you could get the package also. Notice there are some of them shows up with the error, some of them are showing getting installation. Those HTML is the documentation for it. And then some of the package that are not available does not get installed. Some of them they do install it. So I'm going to leave this window here. I'm gonna just um, show you for the R Studio how I'm going to do the R Studio. So the R Studio, as I uh, showed you earlier. On the URL on the browser, I just uh, went to R Studio uh, and get the, the desktop version here. This one, R Studio installed. You can uh, say click on this one, and then there's a number of them, and then one of them is for Fedora or uh, Rocky that I get uh, that one. I already did, did a W get on the URL, so basically you right click here, say copy link, whatever uh, the version that matches your OS. You get that one, then you come in on the command line, open another terminal session here, and become root here. So I'm a Wahid now, I'm going to become root here, and then type in the root password. Now I'm uh, root here. So I'm going to say, uh, let's go to uh, the temp, and then uh, Debian, I'm sorry, not DNF, DHPQGS. So this is where I um, download already in the R Studio. Notice there's a server side, and then this one is the RPM. The one that I'm going to do is R Studio 2024, uh, that one. So in order for me to install that one, first I say file uh, R Studio, uh, and then dash 20, and do that, and that's the one that I want to install. So that is a RPM file. In order to do that one, I could do RPM minus IVH, or I could say DNF install, and then that uh, package name. That will just uh, do the installation. Dependency already resolved, so I'm going to just uninstall it, and DNF remove, because I don't want you to just see like without uh, any uh, installation. Um, um, since I had already installed it, now I took it out, and I'm going to install it now again. Okay. So this time it says that dependency is already installed. It, uh, it is good. So at this time I'm going to go to uh, 
activity here and then this is to show application you click on it and then you see R Studio here and then you just click on R Studio you will have the R Studio open here and then notice that the, the default uh, R Studio installation uh, let me just remove the R uh, Studio uh, so I can show you what it comes with it and then uh, we uh, did some demo here. I'm going to uh, quit out of this one. Notice that I could type in quit or just Q and then that, and it's uh, qu uh, quit it. But I'm going to say clear screen RPM minus IVH, IVH, and then grep minus I, R Studio, uh, R Studio. So notice that um, R RPM minus um, minus QA, sorry, minus QA, query all, and then grip R Studio. So this one is going to show that R Studio is installed that package. In order for me to uh, do that one, I could just say, um, well, read the var, do, and I'm gonna say uh, echo, uh, removing that package, dollar sign var, and say RM minus, not on RM minus R. I'm gonna say uh, DNF remove uh, dollar sign var and then done. So for that package, first it says it is removing the package, that one, then it comes out. And then since I did not give an option of yes, it uh, just did not do it because this option was supposed to say minus Y to remove it for, uh, there. By default, it is an, uh, giving an option of no. So now I'm uninstalling the uh, R Studio. And as you uninstall it, notice if I go back to activity and go back here, now I don't have the R Studio here. And if I just come back here, earlier my command was uh, show me with R Studio, this one now it says no package installed. So now I can do the same package here with the earlier say um, DNF install R Studio dash two and then um, that RPM. This is going to prompt me say, do you want to install SQLite in R Studio? And say yes, go ahead and install it. Now this time installed it. So since it's installed, and then R Studio um, is going to be available for me to run it uh, there. With the uh, uh, R Studio packages, I could also query it to see some of the binaries and everything. So just to give you a good understanding of how Linux works with these packages, here's the command that we did earlier with this, and uh, it was not showing any uh, record. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, minus QA. Query all. Uh, IVH is installed. Uh, you have to give a uh, name of the package. So if I just do this one, it says, okay, that is the package name. I could say RPM minus um, QL and then the name of the package, uh, RStudio uh, dash 20. And then um, sometimes if you just uh, type in studio dash 20, and then tap, it, it, it does not come up with it because it doesn't know what is available on that package. But if I just say um, backtick um, and then cut and paste this command saying that this is the name, dollar sign um, and then uh, parentheses is the same way as this. Uh, last time I used the slap shell, now I'm using a backtick. So you could do the same thing and say, get the list of them there. So if I say uh, grep minus I bend, you can see all the packages that are bend. At the same time, say a grep um, R studio. And so any name that is R studio, uh, show me that one as well as Ben. That's gonna be a longer listing, but uh, notice that um, R studio and software and other ones are available. So you can see that uh, when you do the installation here, uh, you can just go back here on the activity. Now, um, our studio is going to show up here. And you can see here it is there. And then when you double click on it, this is the default installation. It already chose the coloring. 
scheme that I had selected last time. So I'm going to show you that option here. Under the tools, uh, global option, you can just uh, say that, okay, uh, go to appearance. And then here I chose um, uh, COBOL. You could just uh, choose, uh, by default, it comes out uh, some other uh, colors like this white color uh, there. And then whatever option that are there, the theme and that you want to use, there's a lot of them. So um, the one that I like is uh, tomorrow uh, night blue. You can uh, do that one. And if you just uh, look at it and then you just apply it and say, okay, now this is the tomorrow night blue. But if you want to change that um, option under the tools, global option to the cobalt that I had, which was uh, better than the tomorrow night blue. Let me just do the cobalt um, right here, cobalt and not exactly coloring. And then the size of the text, if you want it a little bit bigger, you can change the size also to 12. And then you just go apply and then okay it. Now you have this one. And notice on this one, um, now I'm on the Linux, I could go on terminal here. I'm on actually on a Red Hat um, uh, OS dash release. It's a, a Linux a Red Hat 9.2 or Rocky 9.2, uh, RAL, CentOS, Fedora distribution. So here, every command that you work on the Linux on the terminal, you can do that one. Uh, date and uh, who, who am I, uh, who am I, and then who, who am I. All of these command uh, works the same way um, on the, Linux platform. So um, you name minus A and then uh, and let's say calendar of 1970, that's uh, epoch calendar. I mean, you could do a number of commands. I'm not gonna just uh, keep running commands on this, but on the console, you can also do like uh, get uh, current working directory. So notice that uh, get current, uh, current working directory does not come up here, but let me see. On the console here, you say get uh, get uh, current working directory. No, get get working directory, not current. That's why. And get current working directory is actually a, a, a Python uh, command uh, or function. So get get working directory is the one that you want to get a working directory and then set working directory is to set it. For example, here I say set working directory. First, let's say I say um, my directory is current working directory, current working di uh, directory. Let's say I call the CWD current working directory uh, as equal, and then I say get um, working directory. So that one is uh, there, the current working directory is now that. I'm going to say set a working directory. I'm going to just say uh, C colon, let's say uh, this one is uh, slash users slash Wahid. Let's say I set it up to that. Now I say um, get a working directory. It's going to just say that it's a user Wahid. So in order to set it back to the uh, get current working directory that I had with documents, so since I stored it on the current working directory, I could say uh, set current working directory and instead of this, I could use the variable called current working directory. And that would uh, set it. Now I say get uh, current working directory and there. Notice here is the same as the Linux. So if I say on the terminal here, say PWD, that's my current working directory. If I say set directory to home, it's gonna do that. But if I'm just on the console and I say, uh, let me just clear my screen here say get working directory, get working directory is gonna say oh my heat. Now if I say um, PWD, it's not gonna work. But if I say PWD is equal get working directory, so now PWD is telling me that I'm on that uh, home directory. In order to uh, set my uh, set working directory to, let's say um, slash, the bar directory or bar temp 
uh, or bar log, whatever uh, you want to set it to. So now you could uh, set this one and say, uh, get um, working directory. Now it's uh, bar log and not uh, home body. I could uh, do a set and I just could say um, slash home body and that would set it. And then if I didn't remember to save it, uh, I could have set it manually by doing that one. But if I did it with the bar, let's say I just set it to slash user slash bank, something like this, and now get current working directory set to that. Now I want to just um, store it to my, the variable that previously uh, that was saved uh, as PWD. So now I say this one, get working directory, it is the same thing that originally I started. So there's a lot of functions on the OS level, like for example, sys.info, uh, you could uh, get system information about all the users' details and then uh, system.date uh, here and there. So a lot of the functionality that are not uh, like a uh, package that is not available. Let me do a package that's not available here. Let's say you go control L and you say, um, I'm going to do um, a library and then I'm going to say uh, load tidy verse. Uh, earlier we tried to install it and it says there's no package tidy verse. So um, whatever on the uh, R console that we did, let's see if that command succeeded or not. Uh, so I think it was right here. So you can see that um, there were 50 more warnings using warnings. So some of the packages uh, did not get loaded properly because all these other uh, D fire and Fortress and other ones uh, had to be removed. So you could do individual packages install and uh, uninstall them. I'll show you how, but um, you can also use the command line to install a package uh, like a D flyer, for example. You could say um, install.package and then you say D flyer. D flyer and then uh, let's do that one, install.packages and then the pliers are not found. And so I'm gonna put it within double code because that is the package. And then it's gonna to try to find only the plier, which is on tidyverse. And if the package gets installed, that's great. If the command line give you warning, you say, show me warnings, warnings, and then it will tell you all these warning. Then you have to just see why it's not zero. And then uh, for each package, when you uh, get it, if you do echo dollar sign question mark, you will see that basically this package had uh, minus one or some uh, numbers. But um, in the R Studio, the nice thing is that uh, there's four uh, panes. This is the source, and this is the console, and then this is um, the environment that all the packages, like for example here, control L, if I say LS, show me the packages, the uh, environment variables, all of these environment variables, I just create them and there. So if I go on the environment here and then look at this one, this um, list of uh, um, environments are on here. At the same time, if I type in history, when it is highlighted, you cannot type uh, history and then you can see all that list of commands that I have typed. So under the environment, you can see the list of uh, variables and everything that you have uh, used it, as well as uh, if you go to uh, minimize this window and then the plots, and instead of uh, doing a plot, you could uh, look at the file structure of your file system, as well as the packages. So notice the packages that are here, they're very much already um, uh, kind of available on the IDE. The IDE is going to try to load it for them, for you. So now if I say, check and check this one, I, it's like uh, typing de uh, detach and then um, say um, package, package and name, uh, pack packages or package colon and the flyer. And then that's the name of the package and then comma, unload, 
is equal to. I could do that one, and since it did not uh, recognize it, maybe I have to uncheck this one. It will tell me the path and the syntax of that command. Notice the way I did it, I did not put it within double code, and it requires double code for the package colon D plier and DT plier. Um, DT plier. Uh, so that one was DT. It was a little bit, I, oh, I wanted to do this one. So this one is not loaded. I, if I click this one, it is basically loading it for me uh, using the library, right? This is the name of the library and the uh, flyer. You could do library dplyr or you could say a require dplyr, it will do it. So if I do and uh, detach it, it notice that as soon as you detach it, it uh, just run this command and it says that the detach is true. So if I wanna just uh, say library, and then just uh, say D flyer, that would also load it there. Notice it's checked it now here. If I say detach, D uh, flyer, I'm checked it here. But you can also say require and then D flyer, and you can just uh, load it here. Um, require uh, without the E. So that uh, checked it right here. When you do this uh, deployer, now you can say um, data, uh, data and all the data set that is available for you, you could uh, get to access those ones. Carbon dioxide and then uh, who and women and iris and all of these uh, data sets are available, cars and everything. So if you're looking at any data set, for example, let's say cars, what is in cars? You could say cars, what is it uh, provided? And then um, the deep flyer, for example, uh, let's say we you say uh, iris, um, iris tree, and then you can see the data that is available for iris. You can click on here, and then uh, you could also do a view on it, a view on iris. Notice as soon as you do this one, the package here that is showing the data sets, uh, what are the availability of this. So if you're interested on the uh, data set with um, certain information, let me just um, uh, do a size of this one. And you can uh, just uh, put the cursor somewhere here to adjust it. And let's see, where is it? Yeah. So right here, I can adjust it to see both of the screen here. I'm going to move this one to uh, look a little bit bigger. I don't need anything on the right side. So I could uh, only look at these two screen here. Notice when I did view Iris, I could uh, have a lot of data. So I could say, give me a head of that one. Um, just uh, the head of that Iris there, data set. And so, and then um, when you do that one, uh, let's just do head like this. Um, this is going to give me the head, right? So with this one, if I just say, now uh, give me a view of that one, view of uh, the head here. <coughs> Notice that uh, that information is much more um, kind of controllable. So if I say, uh, how about iris a dollar sign dollar sign uh, species you could see that now i'm looking at uh, that uh, information and if i just say um give me iris um of um not the head of it and let's say um just um, give me everything with uh, iris, or you could say tail of that one. You could also get the tail of that uh, information uh, there. But uh, let's do a summary of the iris data itself. So you could say uh, summary to see what type of um, data set that one is. You can see that the summary here. And then inside the summary, you can say, okay, I get this one, uh, what is, Spale dot length, uh, sepal dot length. So I could say dollar sign sepal dot length. 
that is the variable or the column name that you want to pull. So uh, link, then you could just uh, get that information. Similarly for the other uh, variables, whether you want well width or pedal uh, length and so on, all that uh, information. Um, at the same time, like uh, carbon dioxide, CO2, we looked at it like, if I want to say um, carbon dioxide and dollar sign, and then uh, see what the fields are available for it, or um, iris and dollar sign. And as soon as you put the dollar sign, it, it comes out all of these. So if you're looking at the width of that one, you can just get that information. And then um, cars, for example, Car cars is going to give you this data, Car uh, cars and dollar sign, and then uh, speed and uh, these are the um, kind of columns that is available for it and that is there. So head of course, uh, you could get that information. You could uh, say tail of cars, and then um, summary of cars. I wonder if uh, glimpse uh, is now available. Glimpse of uh, let's say iris. Yeah. So glimpse is a function now that is available, uh, earlier was not available. Uh, because a certain data set, it has kind of like a glimpse of that one, you can get it like almost like a summary of it, right? So this is uh, there, but if I just do for cars, maybe it is available, maybe it's not. So uh, yeah, it is available for carbon uh, dioxide, CO2. Yeah, so uh, time series. Basically, the glimpse function, if you just look at the glimpse itself, uh, so you type in glimpse and then you have to move this one and right here is all the uh, objects. So some of them that are available here, if I do question mark glimpse, notice that um, get a glimpse of uh, the data, you have these um, function in empty cars, for example. Uh, is the uh, information that you could do with like a Star Wars. So if I just say Star Wars is uh, one that has all the uh, attributes and all the information that are pulled, I could say, give me a glimpse of uh, Star Wars. Star Wars. So this is uh, telling you uh, what are the data types and then what are the column names and the 14 columns and all of that. So glimpse is a very good uh, information that could give you. So you can see the gender and the species and all of that. And then you could query it to using um, and the data flyer, data, data manipulation for D flyer, uh, using that one um, as a class and then all the function filter and other ones. So if I just say, what does filter do? You can see the filter uh, function that it is here that is going to check for um, a data set and then by a certain value. So I could say filter, filter, and then um, check, uh, let's say iris. Let's see if uh, iris is there. And then you could just uh, get that one um, by default. And let's say you say uh, x is equal or um, iris and data, iris uh, data frame. So as equal, and you could just assign that one to that. Now I just did a frame is that uh, this type of um, type of uh, iris data frame you already define it in, as a list and then you could say what is it uh, class and then it is going to tell you that it is a data dot frame. So uh, since it's a data dot frame, IDF um, uh, will just give you the output of all of it. You can do a head of it and say uh, give me the head. And then you can say, show me a view of it. View of the data. View of the head, uh, for example, of the data. This. Now you uh, see that the view that we have here, it is all these ones. So if I say um, sepal.width, so if I just say um, on the data set, I could say, um, 
filter and then say, what is it, um, IDF, and then it's the data filter, and then CPAL dot width is greater than uh, 3.5 or 3. So let's do that one, and that would just give you uh, the information and not found. CPAL, and uh, maybe I mistyped on dollar sign CPAL, is the one CPAL dot width. Uh, let me just make sure that um, uh, is uh, accurate. And CPAL dot width. Yeah. So you can do that one is all of those one data will be there. And then you say a uh, link and use the end symbol and say uh, pedal dot link uh, is um, uh, equal 1.5. So you have a smaller data set there. You can see all of those two condition is uh, going to be true. It's going to uh, return the value. And then if you say, assign this one to a new data frame, for example, whatever you want to just uh, assign it to, uh, whatever variable, now you say view a new data frame, then you can see that, that that's uh, exactly those information are there. So filter, select, and other ones are all a part of the select is another one you could do so select on the deploy to select a certain data, right? So you could do select on the portion of the data and then do a where clause and other ones. So there's another thing uh, that is um, with, um, with our language, you can do for statement, if a statement, uh, while a statement, repeat a statement, all of those ones as general programming language. It's not a general purpose programming language, but it is a programming language for statistical data science informatics and uh, a lot of other uh, related uh, statistic uh, software, uh, whether it's uh, for data mining, data visualization, data modeling, or data analysis. You're basically a data scientist. You need our language or Python language. One of those two is going to help you big time. And then uh, if you just um, are doing something like this with uh, this statement, notice this symbol. This symbol is saying that this is uh, kind of like a where clause or piping. And so this symbol, if I just do in the symbol, let me make um, the screen uh, open here. So the symbol is a percentage, greater sign, and then percentage. This is a kind of piping. It's the redirect of uh, the first input uh, to the second ar ar argument. So on the terminal, I was telling you that um, you have redirection statement here, say echo, uh, this is a test. And then I say rep minus I test, and I picked up the word the test. If I say grip minus I Wahid, it's not gonna find it uh, straight. Grip minus I uh, David, it's not gonna find it. But the uh, statement that is going to be there is is there. So that, uh, that's why it's picking it up. So the argument of this input, it comes out uh, uh, as input to the second argument. Uh, so the redirection of um, this one or piping, the input uh, becomes uh, output of this command to the input of this command. So in the uh, console, you could do uh, the piping like that symbol and the per, uh, percentage, greater sign percentage. Uh, so what uh, what does that mean? Let me just make this screen much bigger. Okay, I think that's big enough. I'm going to resize it here. So I'm going to say, uh, for example, head of iris. So this gives you by default some number of uh, lines, 10 maybe there. So if I just want to limit it to 10, I could do that one and then get 10 lines. If I limit it to two only, I could get two only. If I limit it to one, it's uh, only one. So clearing my screen here, if I say uh, iris one line only, show me the li one line, let's just make this one bigger and then clear a screen and then do this um, for two lines, uh, head iris uh, two lines, 
what happened there with uh, had Iris to um, warning messages expression. So something uh, control out, something uh, went up uh, there. Yeah, so two, I think it was just a, co a combination of uh, characters that was passed on and uh, previous command. So and now you can see that it's a one, you see one line and one line. But if you say, for example, iris, that will just give you everything, right? So then I could say percentage, greater sign, um, percentage, meaning that we direct this one. First, give me this iris, which is all the data set. Then uh, where is, or um, then uh, do this. So this is kind of like a filter saying that do this. And then if I say head on the next two line, then you can get the same output as before. You can also say, for example, head one, uh, you could do that one. So uh, it doesn't matter what you're looking for. If you were just uh, saying um, by default, give me the head of it, that is a equivalent to say head uh, iris. So that's uh, similar to that, and it's this, the two of them. So if you say um, head comma three, now you got three lines. In order to do that one equivalent, you just put three direction and then head three. You got the idea. So with that in mind, uh, it is 11.31 uh, p.m. I think you learn enough on um, Linux uh, uh, Rocky version, and then we covered our language, programming language. We covered a lot about a Linux um, installation on the Rocky um, version of uh, our programming language, and we showed you some uh, definition. What, what other things that I just missed to uh, show you, let's just write one more function to just do uh, like something, vectorization summary of this one. So let's say I'm going to, uh, clear the screen, uh, I'm sorry, clear the screen here. <laughs> As I thought that I was in terminal, I type in clear. So I'm on the console, I have to do control L to uh, clear screen. And some uh, statements also cap uh, the slash 014, I believe it works, but uh, control L is easy. And then there's something here also say console, uh, clear console here, it will do it for you. So if you say um, one to 100, you just print that one and then you say edit, um, clear console on the edit, clear console, it will clear it for you. It's like almost uh, control L. So notice that uh, uh, control L plus L is the combination for shortcuts. So if you just uh, do uh, a function, how you do a function. So let's say uh, I create a vector one is equal and uh, say, I say uh, 100 to 1,000 uh, incremented by uh, 100 uh, or by 200. So let's say um, this one, I'm going to put commas here because I want to use the sequence function. And sequence uh, function, it takes um, either uh, two argument or one argument or three argument depend on how you want to use it. If you put only one argument, it uh, just incremented by one, starting from one to all the way uh, to uh, that uh, high range. In this case, it started with 100 to 1,000, uh, incremented by uh, uh, 200. So V1 is 100, 300, 500, 700, 900. That those numbers, right? So if I just make it a little bit larger and then just increment by 50, now I can say V1 is 150 and then 200, 250. So that's a good uh, set of numbers that we could do. If I say type of uh, V1, you can see it as uh, double. And if I say uh, class, class uh, is uh, of V1, what is what type of classes numeric? So at this time, that means all uh, computation that I can do is numeric computation with that vector. It's a vector um, and data type. The data structure and the data uh, the type is numeric. The data structure is a vector, so that means I can uh, manipulate that data the way I want to do it. So V1 
times um, V1 is going to give me a, a bigger numbers. V1 to the power of uh, to the power of uh, two as uh, to the power of two is going to be really huge. Um, but if I want to do to the power of three, as you grow the number, it's going to make much larger, right? Notice that to the power of five, it's already exponential number. So if I just say, do that one, but then also give me a standard deviation of that uh, number uh, to see what is the standard deviation for it. And so I have to, whenever you see this plus symbol, meaning that you started with two braces or two double code or some other things that you need to finish it. So it will just prom, go to a secondary prompt. But if I close it here, it automatically does that. So if I wanna get a mean of that one, you can see that uh, it's going to do this. So now let's say I wanna just do uh, V1 is equal uh, one to uh, 10. That's very easy to uh, calculate, right? Sum of um, V1, we could say what V1. I could just add up the two numbers. V1 is this. So um, if I say sum of uh, V1, it will just give me uh, this. Product of uh, V1 is going to just multiply the number all the way to 10. If I say uh, product of V1 with V1, then it's going to get much larger, right? So all of these um, function, I could also do a sequence with it. So V1 is already this. I could say V1 times 2. You could do um, the same number of times 2, times 3. And V1 um, minus 5. It does not matter what the number you are adding to this one. It is element-wise um, vectorization. That's what uh, our language is good. MATLAB, our language, and Python, that support you. With Python, you have to use NumPy to do this. Uh, it is a regular list uh, and other ones. It's a little bit harder to do vectorization. But with the NumPy, you could do that one because it's written in C and uh, it's completely fast. And uh, it is a regular expression, NumPy and other ones are written in C. So it is almost like compiled language. Native C runs code and it is very, very fast. And the data type is the same homogeneous and the uh, way that the uh, arrays are defined, it is uh, with NumPy is much faster. So uh, there's no overhead also on that. With the um, vectorization of this one, if you look at it, uh, some of the functions that you can uh, call it there, let's just write our own function. Say V1 is this, and if I wanna just add up five to all the numbers. So how do I add five? Um, I could also do this if you want plus five, that is already there, right? But if I want to do um, some function within a vector that is not available, like for example, if I say sequence of um, um, one comma 10 and then um, comma five, comma five, obviously, it will just uh, do that one. And similar, uh, like 20, you could do that one. But what if I just uh, say, whatever is this number, subtract two out of it. This is uh, like, uh, I could just pass on uh, a function to uh, that sequence to say, uh, while this one is there, obviously I could say, and instead of five, I could say minus two here, and that is um, going to do the same thing. But there are times that you're going to write a function uh, as a built-in function in order to do some computation differently. So let's say V1 is this, and I want to just add up 5 to it. So the easy way to do is to add 5, you say, add 5 is equal, you say function, and then x, whatever is the x, you're going to return x plus 5. How simple is that, right? So now say add 5 and then say five, and now I should have 10. And uh, uh, one, I should have six. I uh, Two should have seven, so on. And then now if I just say um, for the um, sequence, I could say uh, V1 uh, 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 plus, um, um, let's say, uh, say add five, and then give a few V1 as input. Since we're adding a five to it, any number that was 
on V1 increment by five. You can see that one. And if I just uh, do a nested uh, add five, add five, and then you can see that uh, the, uh, now every number is going to be six was the first one, the next five is going to make it 11 and so on. Seven would be 12 and so on. So you can see that one. If I just add another add five, you can see add uh, five. So this is nested like less uh, programming language. Now uh, 11 becomes uh, 16, 12 becomes 17, 13 becomes 18 and so on. Right. So if I just uh, write up another function, say subtract five, uh, uh, sub five, and then you could say uh, function and say uh, it takes one argument, again x, and then return x minus five. That's so easy to do that, right? Uh, here. So now the last one that I did uh, with it. Um, if I just uh, call that last one, uh, let's say the last one was this, which was uh, giving me those. And now if I say subtract five, sub uh, five, it uh, should give me 11 and so on, right? Uh, so uh, subtract five out of this, and then 11, 12, and all of that. So the first one. Every time now I just do this one, one more sub, obviously it's going to sub five, is going to just give me the um, 11 would be, the next one would be six and so on. If I want to go back to the original one, I could just call that V1 and I'm already there. But uh, the nested uh, function calls is the concept that you can do for statement, you can do a uh, uh, list kind of programming there, okay? And uh, so, um, uh, have a good one. I will just end up the video here. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel. And the uh, channel is uh, my web university at YouTube. And these are and, uh, information. And if you need documentation and books and everything at my web university, which is my uh, mywebuniversity.com, my website. I have uh, two uh, channels, one in English, which is my Web University YouTube channel in English that takes you to this page. And then basically it's 1,300 videos. You're welcome to uh, watch them. And on the topics of computer science related uh, topics, programming, operating system, database, uh, networking software, cybersecurity, uh, uh, you name it, basically, object-oriented programming, or language, Python, C, C++, algorithm, uh, Boolean logic, Boolean algebra, and then uh, all the mathematicians that are greatest uh, one uh, there. You can see the induction laws or uh, part of it with the Morgan's law, and then also Boolean algebra and uh, uh, George Bow. Uh, Augustus de, Mar uh, de Marcus, um, sorry, Augustus de Morgan, and also um, Al Khawarizm uh, algorithm now is named after him. Musa uh, Muhammad uh, Musa Al Khawarizmi, the Persian uh, mathematician of the uh, 9th century. He left uh, between 780 to 830 uh, or something. So uh, he uh, was the inventor of algebra. Algebra or Alessab or um, uh, uh, basically um, everything that you know nowadays with um, mathematics and uh, uh, algebra was started back then by Al Khawarizmi and then the great uh, Indian mathematicians and uh, Hindu India, um, Hindu, uh, uh, what they call it, uh, sorry. It's like Greek and Indian uh, uh, mathematics, uh, Indian uh, uh, at the time of maybe the first century and some other ones. And there's a lot of good uh, uh, documentation here as well as videos and then some other people's made nice comments about uh, the, uh, the time that it started with Indian uh, for the mathematics, algebra, uh, Indian numeric, that's what it's called basically. 
the Indo, uh, Indian uh, numeric uh, numbers and the Greek, uh, and then uh, uh, Muhammad bin Musa al-Khawarizmi, put them all together and then started out with and the uh, number, decimal numbers that we know today. And then, um, so you could watch all of those ones basically. And then also for the website, if you go to the website, let me just take you to the website. Uh, my web university dot uh, com. You can see here. I also have the Persian uh, channel for the Farsi uh, spoken people. Whether you're from Afghanistan, Iran, Tajikistan, you're welcome to watch these videos in Farsi. That's my mother tongue. I um, was born in Afghanistan, Kabul, Afghanistan, and I was raised up uh, till nineteen, and then I left the country because of Russian war, and then. Uh, Migrated to Pakistan and went from Pakistan to New York and then from New York to California. Now I've been living the rest of my life in California, and I'm very happy with uh, what uh, God has provided me and have uh, given me the ability to survive with all those uh, sad and tough hard time. At the same time, I have um, got my degrees in computer science with Bachelor of Science and Master of Science at Computer Science. Um, major uh, from Cal State Fullerton, as well as I've uh, taught classes at the university level, whether it's uh, Cal State Fullerton uh, itself, National University, Pasadena City College, Computer Learning Center, a lot of places. And I have been working at uh, Jet Proportion Laboratory NASA, which is a very honor. And there I have been an uh, enterprise system analyst for the past uh, number of uh, years, nine or 10. And before that one, I was a senior professional system admin for more than 20 years. And I've been working in the industry for 30 years or more. So um, you're welcome to join our channel or go to my web university and, uh, and learn from this book that I wrote, The Direct Path to Linux Ubuntu. It's about 14 chapters. You can learn everything that you need to know about Linux, Red Hat, and Rocky Linux, Ubuntu, um, PowerShell, Windows, um, Bash scripting, and then Python, C, C++, uh, and include files and uh, standard C and C++ libraries, manual pages, all in, in a PDF format. In fact, uh, on this one of the chapters where it's, uh, it says the dynamic generation of Linux Ubuntu, you can go to uh, search for like any, the entire bash uh, programming, bash scripting, born again shell in a PDF format. You could just see the entire things I've produced it to you. And uh, this one is usually on a Linux machine in a text format, but I made it on a PDF format using the Python program that I wrote and generated that file and then give it to you here. So you can just come and say, uh, give me something about our language and I will just produce a PDF a version of it for you. So if you just are interested in learning the technical documentation, you don't have to buy books. You just come in and like I learn, you can learn easily. And then uh, here, notice that some of the website and uh, uh, the URL are there like um, bugs.r.project. So if you go here, you can also uh, remove this uh, bugs.r.project and go to r.project and see all the documentation that I was start pointing to you. So you can go to download and install the software or just go under the docs here and then say, I want to read uh, about our language. So under the R language, you can see under documentation manual, you can have all kind of HTML and PDF formats here. So I'm not reinventing the wheel, but I'm pointing you to the documentation that is already out there. And if the documentation is there, um, nobody should reinvent it. You just uh, get into the source code and then read it and understand it and all of that. But if uh, the documentation was not there, let's say you come in on my web university, I give you like, if you come in on the main page, notice that uh, just going to the next page here on the table of contents, I have some of the uh, classes, like let's say advanced Linux and Unix. I could just provide you the entire uh, Linux uh, as uh, practicing it online. 
you could go to Colab on Google um, and just uh, type in some of the commands. Yes, uh, the, uh, you put exclamation mark on it in front of it or something, but this one is much easier, faster. And look at this, uh, like for example, you wanna see the PS3 command, like as if you're sitting in front of a Windows command. So uh, PS3 uh, for one, process ID of one system D, it shows you all the output of system D processes. You say, that's great. Can I see the manual pages? Yes, you can see the manual pages and read it. And then you say, that's good. <laughs> I just like this one, but uh, maybe let's see in chapter three, some of the commands that I cannot practice. What do you provide me? So I provide you all the videos as well that you could uh, learn all these commands. But if the command is something that you can just type in df-h, you will see the output on my uh, cloud. So you don't have to worry about it. Like if you just type in on calendar, for example, you just uh, go on chapter two, you could just uh, say, well, uh, let's see the calendar command and then say uh, to, uh, this month, what is it? In August, you can see that. one. But at the same time, if you say, um, let's say on chapter three, I uh, provided this documentation on change uh, group, and change mode, change ownership. All of these one, notice that I give you in a very nice table, like a book. So you can read it and practice it online uh, one by one. And you have to know UMask or uh, uh, command syntax, all of that one, I gave you uh, for each one of them. And then at the same time, if you are a Linux um, kind of guru and you wanna practice, you can type in on this command on um, chapter five, I'm providing you some shell scripting that you can see the actual script here. And then I, I did this one and you can run it here. And the comparison of the two uh, numbers, 10 and 10, you can see the output. And if you just say, show me that command the actual uh, script here, you could do this one, or you could just type in here and type in PWD frameworking directory, uh, unit dash A, uh, Get, run the command that are there. But if you say, well, I'm a hacker, I'm going to hack your system, store.chi, and you say, well, this is not uh, allowed. You say, well, that was not allowed. Let me do a pwd rm uh, slash temp slash store.txt, whatever syntax you provide, then uh, I'm not going to allow certain ones. But if you just do a, a regular commands and then um, want to test uh, my system, yes, you can uh, just learn Linux and uh, start uh, learning it. And so I provide you the resources online for free and then you should not be uh, hacking my system and instead try to help on uh, your community, help others as well. So for example, if you're looking at the Red Hat Enterprise documentation, notice there's about 12,000 PDF files just for Red Hat. So whichever one you are looking for, let's say you're looking for math.h or something, uh, if any um, file is there, let's say it's kind of um, as a function and there that you can see, and then you're getting that one. If you say, um, let's do sprintf, sprintf. So sprintf is also a function that our language supports it, and you can see that you can pass on a string and then uh, format the string and you print it out with percentage D for decimal and the percentage F for floating point, percentage S for a string and so on. So you are seeing this uh, documentation. And if you're looking for something that it's uh, not in the manual pages, not Node.js or Java or Go language, go to the dynamic one and just type in here, go for Go language, and then you will see documentation for that. And then uh, if you're looking for uh, Node.js, then just type in Node here, and then I'll gen generate it on the fly for you. You get this one. Similarly for Java, for example. So you can see the resource are out there. You just have to have the desire to learn for free and educate yourself and help yourself get a better job and do great at your school and at your environment. God bless you all and help us others as well. Um, whatever uh, you learn, pass it on. Knowledge is power by sharing. It makes us all a great community and help each other. Take care. Bye-bye.